Word. Oh my gosh, we've got so much stuff here today. So what is up, y'all? We are out today on the beach. We're gonna be doing a little beach cruising. As you guys can see, we've got the sucker. If you have not seen me build this, I will link that video down in the description below. Basically, this is a homemade bait sucker made out of PVC pipe. I literally came here today with no bait, so we're gonna be trying to suck some bait out of the ground. But also, I honestly haven't got the opportunity to take the bike out on the beach as much as I want to. And this place is absolutely freaking beautiful we got some layers on today it is a bit chilly after it was just like super warm this weather is going freaking everywhere but yeah man <laughs> i got so much stuff i'm trying to figure out how to like bike with all this gear we have limited storage i had to leave some stuff behind we're gonna throw this a little kangaroo pouch we got two rods with us we got tackle in the bag and we've got our sand spikes we should be good to go let's hop on the bike here let's go see if we can find us some freaking bait, man, you know, save a little money today. What's up, dude? And don't forget, I also have this tripod that we're also put in the kangaroo pouch. We've got a lot of gear today. Let me just show you real quick. This is the setup. We've got two rods, an e-bike, and a dream. These things are so freaking sick because they've got the fat tires so we can swiftly maneuver on the sand. And they're battery powered. It's got a battery in here, so we don't even have to pedal, man. All we have to do is push this little thingy, just push that down. Woo, and we're chasing a seagull right there. Oh, geez. Here's the ocean. It honestly does not look as bad as I thought it would. There's one dude fishing over there. He's got a really nice big hat on. All right, Whew. let's see how far we can go. Woo! All right, so I'm gonna be completely honest. I wanted to drive all the way down this way. There's some really cool looking stuff down there and I think we can find some good bait. However, somebody forgot to charge the bike battery. So uh, we have like two, it went down to like one bar, which isn't a ton of battery power. And the thing is, I don't know if you guys can see this, we kind of rusted out the chain on this somehow, I guess just from it being outside and in Florida. So it doesn't really pedal. So if I can't push the button, we gotta like walk all the way back, which probably wouldn't be the most fun. So we're just gonna park it right here for now. We could go down and you know test it out a little bit later. I don't know. Just wanna make sure we got some juice to get back. I just wanna see if this spot is going to, uh, you know, have what we might need. Lots of shells around here too, man. Always gotta keep your eyes peeled for some shark teeth. Never know when you see that Megalodon. All right, let's see. What's going on over here? Oh, thought I just found a tooth there. It was a fake tooth. All right, so you guys can kind of see the tide is on its way out. It actually goes way, way, way up that way. Honestly, if you're new to a beach and you want to, you know, find some good spots to cast, because some people don't know that you don't just cast like anywhere and catch fish on a beach. You kind of think that, right? If you're just starting out, you're like, oh, the fish, ocean, they're out there somewhere. Sometimes that can be the case, but a lot of times you're looking for holes, you're looking for runouts, you're looking for, you know, a reason for fish to be in certain areas. I'm not the best at this. I'm no freaking fish professor, but this is pretty cool. So you can see this right here, people call this a fish highway. It's also called a slough, I believe. So fish kind of go back and forth through here. There's like a little bar right there. And then this is what you really want to find. This is called a run out and this creates a rip out there basically if you guys can see over there there's a little other fish highway so fish will go through these sloughs eating bait and all that stuff and water just gets pushed from here out it's basically like a big funnel buffet system for fish so as stuff gets pushed out bait smaller fish whatever the heck a lot of bigger fish will be out there sitting you know maybe on the edge of it and waiting for food to come out so a lot of times if you find something like this you can kind of cast around and you know, a lot of times you'll have success finding fish or not. I mean, it's freaking fishing. You never know, right? Sometimes it's hard to read the beach, though. There's a lot of, and that's a whole separate video. Again, you guys can look that up on the internet. It's still hard, even for me sometimes, to read the beach. But if you come at low tide, you can see stuff like this, and you're like, okay, this is a good spot. I should be fishing here, probably. But also, I mean, don't get me wrong. Stuff changes different tides and different things. All right, let's find some freaking bait, dude. I don't know if this is a good spot. I don't see any, uh... Ooh, look at these pelicans so graceful huh this is kind of interesting so what we are looking for if you guys haven't seen my first video doing this we are trying to catch some ghost shrimp to use for bait i'm also looking for if there's any sand fleas around as well because that would be also a very good bait the way you find ghost shrimp is you have to find little tiny holes in the sand and then we're going to pump them out with our sucker the issue is i don't see any holes i do see sand wow Dude, look at how deep that is right there. I mean, literally, that's like two, three feet deep just in the middle of there. And you can see, I'm just on the side on the bar, but that is freaking deep, man. This would be an excellent spot to freaking fish. 
when the tide comes in a little bit even just out there just to cast as well but i'm gonna mark this down on my gps all right i'm gonna keep biking a little bit i don't think that this is what we were looking for again this is my second time doing this i don't really know what what i'm doing but we're doing it oh All right. This tide is still going out for a little while longer. I think the more it goes out, the more that we might be able to find some ghost shrimp since we can't get all the way down to the spot I wanted to. Live bait might be a fail for the moment. We'll see if we can end up getting any of those ghost shrimp. All I know is I've heard they are really, really, really good bait, especially this time of the year for a bunch of different fish. It's also just one of those baits, you know, you can't really get at a tackle shop. It's like one of those premium, premium baits. So this is what we've got now. We've got a Sputnik sinker and we've got a high low rig, basically two dropper loops on our bigger rod. And then I'm just gonna put some of this on. This is fish bites. I mean, this stuff does work. It's just, uh, you know, it's hard to beat. Good fresh bait. I think it's sand flea scent. I don't even know what could be out here to be honest. I thought I, this is the fun of fish in saltwater. I always say it, but never freaking know, dude. So that is the rig. Pretty darn simple. This is our half charged bike. Not even half, dude. I just I really want to go down that way, but that's gonna to have to be for a future video. I'm not risking that. We we would have to literally walk that bike all the way back, especially with a foot. That is on the mend. All right. So we're chucking that out there. Let's see what happens. Hopefully these sand spikes work. I fished this beach like two times ever before. I've kind of found out the hard way that these sand spikes that are literally just PVC are not the best for this. People have these PVC ones, but they have metal that goes down and it looks like it really sticks you down in there. These, like, I don't know if it's the soft sand. I don't know what it is, but these things slowly flop and it's so freaking frustrating. Hopefully it doesn't happen today. I think it's more when the tide's coming in and it's, you know, suctioning. Pretty calm waters out there today though. All right, well, not live bait, but we are fishing. Let's get another one out there. Let's see, man, it's just an experiment at the end of the day. So this second rod that we're gonna be throwing out, it's a little bit lighter. And on this, we have a pompano rig. So it's basically the same rig as that one, but there are floats on it, which may maybe attract some fish. I don't really wanna to get too, too wet here. We are gonna to toss that a lot closer in than this other one too and see possibly there's some stuff swimming nearby as well as a little bit further out. You know, just a little bit of science. It'll be interesting to see too, if we can maybe catch like some smaller whiting. I might cut that up and uh, use it to try to catch some bigger fish out here because this beach is known to have some pretty decent fish. Who knows if this is the right spot, the right tide. You can see we're kind of posted up at one of these runouts right here too. It's not as deep or powerful, you know, because of the tide, but see if that has any effect on the bite. We can move around too, if we don't get bit here. We'll just see, man. Hopefully we can catch something. I, I have one species in mind that I would love to bring home, do a little catch and cook on, but we are at the mercy of Mother Nature. Ooh, all right, speaking of Mother Nature, I'll put this down a little bit. Can y'all see the shark tooth? Anybody see it? Right here. Boom. That's exactly why you gotta stay looking out when you're fishing beaches like this, around all these rocks and shells and stuff. That's cool, man. First one of the day. The lucky tooth has been found. Now we can get our day started. Whoa, 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 all right, the fish might be out, out, out. Hello? I don't know why, I always feel like I get bit better when I leave it alone.
Huh. Well, uh, anyway, that was the first bite. I'm just gonna kind of leave that there. I mean, they're really not gonna take that off the hook. And that's a circle hook anyway, so they're just gonna hook themselves. See if that gets touched again. I'm gonna try to throw this other one out a little bit further then too. That's why it's good to have two rods different lengths. Oh no. Okay, we got fish. I just ran over here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh boy, that's probably not what we want to see, I don't think. <laughs> okay, I see a fin. Oh wait. Wait, 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 wait. So one of the fish I wanted to catch. Ugh. It's a type of shark, actually. Let me see if we can bring this dude in. Oh. Come here, buddy. All right, what is that? Ooh. Okay, there we go. That's actually what we want to see right there, man. That is the fish. That's a decent sized one too, dude. All right. So I don't know if you guys can tell, he doesn't really have the biggest of teeth. There we go. But just like dealing with, you know, any animal, especially shark, you gotta be careful. They still do have some chompers on them. I'm gonna get this out there real quick. All right, so here he is. I don't know if you guys can see. He definitely does have some teeth, but nothing like too, too crazy. He got some crazy looking eyes there too. That is a bonnet head shark. Now, oh geez, they are freaking strong, dude. One thing I have heard about these dudes, oddly enough, is that they are very good eating and you're allowed to keep this fish. It looks crazy eyes though. Super freaking cool, man. First catch of the day. Let me know if anything bites us on those other eyes. You guys can see them pretty good, hopefully. But uh, yeah, man, we are actually gonna clean this guy up. We're gonna take this home. This is a species of fish I've been wanting to do catch and cook on for a long time now. So this is cool that we actually caught one. And uh, heck yeah, man. First catch of the day. Not what I was expected to be doing. Not on the bait we thought we were gonna get, but that's not a bad first fish, dude. Whoa, 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 this rod's gone. Do we have fish on here? Oh yeah. Something was just biting us, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I feel um oh man. Okay. <laughs> dude, back to back, dude. Okay. Now this is what I'm talking about. That is a freaking monster whiting. I don't know if you guys can really tell or not. These guys, these guys are really strong too. <laughs> freaking sand flying in my mouth. Dude, these guys are so strong. I don't know if you guys can tell how big that is or not, but that is a really decent size. I'd probably say, I'd probably call it a 13 inch whiting. Heck yeah, man. So what we're gonna do actually, oh jeez, oh boy. Here we go, try to get you guys a good look at that. So what we are going to do, we're gonna take this dude home, we're gonna take the bonnet head home. I gotta clean up real quick. That was like back to back. And we're gonna see, man, people say this is a really good eating fish. So we're gonna compare this to the bonnet head. I've tried this before, but you know, it's kind of like a baseline, but there we go, man. Cool, heck yeah. Fresh fish for dinner. So we ended up filleting the shark real quick because I've heard that you want to do that as soon as you can. All right, let me get this back out to where we caught that whiting. Two pretty good catches. Being out here, you know, it's just awesome enough, but anything you catch is a bonus though, especially when it's back to back. 
ghost shrimp who definitely though down in the comment section below if you guys want to see me come out here and actually do the ghost shrimp and pumping and stuff i think i know a spot here where we could do it we can see what we can catch on it we'll have to make sure to charge the battery though fishing snack of the day we got some ice oatmeal cookies these things are freaking fire Mm. This year I'm focusing a lot more on bringing snacks and drinking a lot more water when I go out and do these fishing things because previously, like other years, I would not really eat anything. I would honestly barely drink and I'd be half alive by the end of it. I mean, you know, this isn't the healthiest of options, but freaking sue me, man. Let me eat my cookies. While we're waiting here for another bite, I really do just want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching these videos. If you are not already, make sure to go down there, hit that subscribe button. We are on the road. One day we will be approaching 1 million subscribers, which that is... That, like that number doesn't even make freaking sense man that is big number i mean we're already at big number but you know what i'm saying also if you guys are not yet already make sure to go down there and hit the notification bell if you want to get all the videos that i upload because youtube's weird these days you just have to go hit it and then hit all notifications and then you should get the videos and stuff but yeah man i appreciate the heck out of y'all for just coming on these adventures with me it truly means the world and you know just get the vibe out eat cookies try to catch some fish let's see if anything else will bite out here Oh boy, that wasn't my best idea. This stuff like looks kind of dryish, but this is where the tide is going out. We are swampy, man. I am completely soggy and it's not that warm out. Could I have found a better place to sit? Possibly. Will it affect us catching fish? Heck no, man. It is kind of interesting though how like it kind of comes in waves it feels like sometimes. Like for a while there, absolutely no bites. And then boom, boom. I was literally trying to unhook the shark and my other freaking rod was getting bit. Now we're back to like a, a slow period. Not really catching too much. Dude, my, <laughs> I'm not even joking, man. My butt is so wet. Oh my God, it, it literally, I'm wearing shorts under my freaking pants. Those are so all the way down to the freaking skin, dude. I might as well have just sat in the ocean itself. That's how we learn as humans, I suppose. You guys can kind of see how far this has gone out now. This is where we oh, 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 oh frick. I was gonna move this. This rod has a freaking fish on it, I think. Holy crap. I think we got a fish on here. <laughs> I was gonna say, this is where we are setting the rods up now. This tie's been going out. I had to cast out a little bit further. Move closer to the water. It's definitely a fish on here. Definitely something. I don't think it's a nice size shark like the first catch. Oh, we got something. What is that? Again, you never know in the salt. Dang, we really bombed this out there, I guess. All right, there it is. What is that? Okay. Whew. Another good size one. There we go, man. Whiting number two of the day. We already have one, so we're not going to be bringing this guy back home. A little bit of a longer. What? What? Frick, dude. Why do I always drop these dudes? All right, you're not going anywhere. Where, where are you swimming? There's negative water there. Whoa. There he goes. All right. See, the nice thing about this artificial bait sometimes is that one, you know it's going to be on the end of your line. Like, it's pretty hard for it to get bit off. And also, oh, what the heck happened here, man? Freaking professional fisherman. But also, you don't really have to worry about keeping it alive. Now, I will say I haven't had as much success nearly on artificial stuff like this as I have you know, live shrimp or fresh shrimp. Who knows what we would have caught if we had some of that out here. Or even, you know, ghost shrimp. That'd be pretty freaking cool to have. But you know, as always, it's a good thing to keep a variety of stuff in your bag just in case. You know what I mean? All right. We haven't lost one piece of bait yet. Launch that sucker out of there. All right. Let's see if anybody else wants to bite. It would be really cool to catch redfish from the surf here. Not sure if they're around, not sure if they'd want this bait. 
It'll be cool to catch black drum from the surf as well. Pompano, I mean, I'm pretty sure most of the Pompano are already moved out of here, but there's smaller ones around from what I've heard. I don't know. We are like the only ones out on this beach. I passed maybe one or two people, seen like a couple other people biking, but look, nobody as far as I can see over there, turn this way, nobody as far as the eye can see. All right, y'all, we are back in the camper. Chef First State is about to do a little bit of work. This is actually pretty cool. This is officially the second shark that I'm ever going to catch and cook. The one is the, if you live in Delaware, you guys have probably encountered these if you ever surf fished, the freaking dogfish. Different species of shark that, you know, they don't get too big. A long time ago, I tried to eat one. Today though, we are trying a fish that I've heard from some locals is a very good eating fish. Now I kind of did some research online and it said that these fish are not really sought after for human consumption. And a lot of people, like they sell them and then people buy them to use as crab bait. I guess a really good crab bait. So we're gonna save the carcass and everything else and the head and stuff. Probably gonna do some crabbing with that. All right, so these are the two comparable fillets. The one on the left is the whiting and the one on the right is the shark. It gets pretty interesting when I do that and flip it over. Look at the, like, look at that. Flip that over like that. Now look, I know there's a lot more meat with the shark and there's another fillet with this, but we're just doing a little comparison. I try to do, you know, as close to each other as possible here, just cut them up. Again, whiting is a fish that, you know, a lot of people go out there to harvest and to eat. And I've heard from a lot of different people that it's their favorite fish to eat. So this is pretty steep competition. Will the bonnet head do itself any justice against the whiting? We will freaking find out today. Toys everywhere. You'd think I have a child. Go, 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 go. Okay. Okay, yes. Good boy. Wait. As always, before we eat, the fam's got to eat. All right. So I'm gonna do some light stuff to this. We're not gonna go too crazy with the seasonings. This is gonna be, you know, a taste comparison and a taste test just to add something else to our Pokedex of fish that we've caught and cooked, which is always cool, man. I love trying different things. There's not much cooler than going out there, catching your own food and then eating it. Like it's just, that that's so freaking cool to me. So bonnethead sharks, people also call them shovelhead sharks. I didn't know this. I thought it was like different, but they kind of look similar. They actually are in the hammerhead shark family. I did not know that. I thought there were two different kinds of sharks. And on top of that, an interesting fact is they are the smallest out of the 10 hammerhead shark family species. Bonneheads, again, they like to feed on crustaceans. That's why they bit our, what are we using? Sand flea, fish bite gum stuff. But I've also caught them on shrimp. They eat crabs. And apparently according to Google, they eat small fish. Fishes. These dudes are all over the waters down here, but they are a very harmless shark apparently. I mean, you guys saw the mouth. It has very little front teeth. And then they have like these cool back teeth where they use a crab or something. They like kind of chomp them down. Apparently they reach a maximum of around five feet and that's females, the males are smaller. And the good thing to know about the bonnethead sharks are that they are not endangered in any sense. If you're fishing for sharks in a lot of different states, especially here, there's a lot of regulations you need to follow. And there are prohibited species where if you do catch them, you need to like be in the water and release them instantly, no pictures or anything. Like, Back in Delaware, you gotta you got be careful, man, especially if you take pictures or anything and it's out of the water line. But yeah, bonnet heads are listed as least concerned. Again, you have to harvest appropriately. In Florida, there are some other harvestable sharks and some much bigger ones, including the bullhead, black tip, uh, thresher. I think there are some other ones too, but yeah, bonnet head is like, one of the main bycatches I believe. Around this area, this time of year, especially a lot of people are whiting fishing like that and you throw shrimp or whatever and you end up hooking in nice freaking shark that pulls pretty good and we're gonna see, man, is it worth keeping? Is it tasty? I've also heard shark can have like high mercury levels and I also heard people say it's like really tough. So we're gonna see. All right, so I patted them both dry. We're gonna hit them. Oh geez. I have to wash the head. You hit them a little garlic powder, just a little bit of seasoning, nothing too crazy. These are my two go-tos, the garlic powder, and then you guys already know, man, he won the only static seasoning. If you're interested in picking up a bottle of this, I will have a link down in the description below. It really helps support me, helps support the channel, but either way, man, just you guys watching and being here and hanging out, that's just more than I could ever ask for. So here is a good look, hold on. Boom, all right, what do you think of that, Gordon Ramsay? Can't even tell which is which. So this is the shark on the right. Shark is still a little bit bigger of a filet. I try to make them kind of even. And then, yeah, waiting. 
is on the left. Oil, water. All right, here we go. Getting everything a little hot, a little melted up. Here goes the whiting first. And here is the shark. It does feel like a little bit more bouncy, I will say. The whiting kind of got that like, I don't know, fishy feel to it. Shark definitely has got like, you push down, it kind of pushes back. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Here we freaking go, man. The ultimate test. You might hear some uh, children like screaming out my window. <laughs> They're having fun, man. They're playing. I mean, better to play outside than stare at a screen, right? You guys should probably hear that though, right? It's kind of loud. All right, y'all. So here we go, man. The taste test. The moment of truth. The Bonnethead shark versus the waiting. We're going to try. This is not the best camera setup. Again, one man crew doing what we can. Here we go. As always, waiting, nice, white, flaky. Smells pretty good, man. This is the baseline, let's try this. It's still a little hot. Freaking, it's good, man. Whitey's got that, you know, it's a little bit fishy, but it's not like, it doesn't taste like fish, fish, fishy. If that makes any sense. It's just a nice, white, flaky meat, man. We've done some ketchup cooks on them before. I mean, with the static seasoning, especially with a little bit of butter, a little oil and stuff, it's pretty good. Is this going to be like, oh, look at that. Oh, it goes right through. Oh, let me show you what this looks like. You know, yeah, look at that. That is a nice white flaky. Wow. Dude, that looks like chicken. Look at that. That's a more firm fish for sure, but it's nice white flaky. All right, second time ever catching cooking a shark. First time ever trying one down here. I don't know why I thought it would smell like shark or something. All right, let's try this. Okay, hold on. Dude, I'm telling you, it literally, it's like a mix of like chicken and fish, like the way it looks and like the meatiness of it. But it tastes, it's definitely not my favorite. It looks good, like the presentation is good, the way it like cuts with the fork is so good. I can't put my finger on it. There's like a um, almost like bitter taste in that as well. I don't know what if that's just shark. I don't know, maybe I don't like the taste of shark. Maybe it's just this fish in general. I don't know, let me know if you guys ever try this. Let me know if you ever tried shark before. Would I catch and cook that again? I mean, probably not, especially if whiting are readily available and those things are freaking delicious. That, that, that's like white, flaky, delicious meat. This one just tastes a little off to me. Can't quite put my finger on it. I gotta go shower and get out of these wet freaking clothes, man. Again, thank you guys so much for all the freaking support. Let me know what other species you'd like to see me catch and cook. I think on my list in the near future, I still would love to do oyster. Got a couple other fish on there as well. Chef First Day is gonna keep busy. Now, I wanna get the bike out there. We're gonna charge it. We're gonna find the bait and we're gonna drive all the way down to a spot that I think looks really freaking good. We just couldn't get there today and we are gonna have a good day. We'll do that here soon. But yeah, man, as always, thank you guys so much for all the freaking support. All I gotta say is let's keep this rolling. Thank you guys for watching. See you next video. Boop. You wanna know this well?